Hi, it's Illumina Saras, and today we will be talking about one evolutionary explanation of disgust, and the learning outcome we will tackle today is, examine one evolutionary explanation of behavior. The command term examine tells us to carefully scrutinize an argument or theory, and in this case the evolutionary explanation of behavior, and see how this explains something and perhaps why. This is an ERQ command term, which means we need to have that analysis and application in our essay. The behavior we will be discussing in today's video is disgust. Before we talk specifically about disgust, let's talk more about evolution. Evolution is the theory that the living things that exist today developed from earlier types. But we know that the characteristics of our ancestors and the characteristics of us now are different, right? Well, this can be explained through natural selection. Natural selection is the process whereby the organisms better adapted to their environment tend to survive and produce more offspring. And as time passes, the more favorable traits will be passed down from generation to generation, which explains the change in heritable characteristics over time. For instance, giraffes used to have relatively short necks, but because lower vegetation was eaten by other animals, it was more favorable for giraffes to eat food higher up in the trees. The giraffes with long necks were therefore able to survive and pass on their traits to their offspring, resulting in giraffes having long necks nowadays. Now in psychology, the evolutionary perspective is used to explain mental and psychological traits such as memory, perception, language, and behavior in terms of natural selection. And today we will be looking at the evolutionary explanation of why pregnant women are particularly sensitive to disgust during their first trimester of pregnancy, and why people have stronger disgust reactions when when looking at things that are infectious or harmful or cause illnesses. So first, let's look at a study conducted by Fessler et al. in 2005. They aimed to see if the sensitivity to disgust was elevated in order to compensate for the suppressed immune system. In women's first trimesters of pregnancy, hormones lower their immune system so that it does not fight the new genetic material in the womb. In their second and third trimesters, the immune systems are suppressed less and more or less restored to their original state prior to the pregnancy. The researchers conducted a web-based survey on 496 pregnant women and compared the sensitivity of disgust of women in their first trimester of pregnancy to the sensitivity of disgust of women in their second and third trimesters of pregnancy. The analysis showed that the participants in their first trimester reported greater sensitivity than did the participants in the second and third trimesters, and they also reported more nausea. These results therefore show support for Fessler et al.'s initial hypothesis that disgust sensitivity varies during pregnancy in a manner that compensates for the pregnant woman's vulnerability to disease. So using this study, we can explain why disgust was more prominent in pregnant women in their first trimester of pregnancy. We can say that it is for women in their first trimester of pregnancy to avoid potentially harmful or hazardous substances from entering the body as their immune system is suppressed during that time period. This makes it more likely that the woman and her child in her womb will survive, and thus the pregnant woman will pass on her traits to her offspring. However, some criticisms of this study is that the data was collected through questionnaires, and self-reports can be less reliable because the standards of disgust may be different for each woman. In addition, we cannot say that the findings are solely based on evolution, because the findings can be a result of the environment as well. Now, the findings of this study are supported by another study which was conducted by Curtis et al. in 2004. The aim of this study was to test the hypothesis that disgust is an adaptation that serves to prevent disease. Over 77,000 people from 165 countries participated in an online survey placed on the BBC Science website, and among them, 40,000 respondents were chosen to rate the level of disgust for 20 images on a scale of 1 to 5. Among the 20, there were 7 pairs, one of which was infectious or harmful, and one of which was similar to the first image but was not infectious or harmful. For example, one image of, was of a bodily fluid, and the other was of a blue viscous liquid. The results of the study showed that the disgust reaction was strongest for images that threatened the immune system. Disgust also decreased with age and women also had higher disgust reactions than men. The results of this study show that disgust is evolutionary. Natural selection may have helped our ancestors to be more disgusted at things that threaten their immune system to avoid things that could lead to diseases or sicknesses. This would allow them to survive better and pass on their traits to their offspring. The decrease in disgust with age can be explained because older people are less likely to reproduce. 
As for gender, the disgust reaction may be stronger for women because they are the ones who actually carry the offspring and need to make sure the offspring survives. In conclusion, this study supports the hypothesis that disgust aids in reproduction and therefore is evolutionary. As an evaluation, we could say that the population may not be representative because it's the people who voluntarily visited the BBC Science website, so the sample may be biased. And as we saw in the first study, we cannot explain the results of this study solely to evolution because there may be environmental influences that may act as confounding variables. So that is it for today's video. I hope you liked it and I will be posting more um, IB psychology and other IB videos from now on. Bye!